Hello everybody and welcome to your 13th C Sharp XNA platformer tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be learning about uh, the input manager class. So uh, the input manager is going to to solve a lot of, of, of problems when it comes to input. It's going to handle all our problems for input for us. Uh, so, so let's get started. So what we're going to want to do is create a new uh, input manager class now um a lot of people uh a lot of people are gonna be like okay uh like some people might think it's smart to make uh as input manager singleton because uh especially if if you're playing doing a one player game right uh it's the same input like only one person's gonna be inputting throughout the whole game, so might as well make one universal input manager. It's not really good to do that. Uh, there could be some benefits, but uh, uh, if you decide to add in two players into your game, it's going to be like hell on earth because of that. And there, there's, there's just a lot of complications if you do it. And I'm not going to go into all of those, but I would advise you to do it the way I'm going to be doing it. So what we need to include, we need to include use um, the... XNA framework uh, input. Okay, so we're gonna have we're we're gonna have our keyboard states. So we're gonna have two keyboard states. We're gonna have previous key state, and we're gonna have our key state, our current key state. Okay, and uh, we can have properties to get the values in case we need to. Uh, get return previous key state. And we can set previous key state equal to our value. And then, sorry. Uh, and then we can do the same thing for key state. I'll just copy this. And we just gotta remove the previous, so delete that. Delete that and put that. Okay, so we got uh, that there. So we're gonna have um, we're we're gonna have a lot of uh, we're gonna have some functions. Okay, so first one's gonna be key pressed. Okay, and we're gonna take in uh, a key, and this is just gonna check for single key presses, right? And we're going and no, first of all, we need to make an update. So we're gonna say public void update. And then the update is going to say previous key state is equal to key state and key state is equal to keyboard dot get state. Okay, so you got to call that before you use any of these functions. So we're going to say that if key state dot is key down and previous key state dot is key up and the key then therefore uh, that's a single key press so we return true and this should be boolean sorry and return false so this should be a boolean uh, boolean method so what is this saying right here okay so every single time we loop through our program previous key state is going to be equal to the key state right so look at it so if I press the down key okay the previous key state is okay so pretend I never press anything the program is going on going on going on I never press anything then the keyboard state detects that I press the down key. So previous key state is equal to null, but key state is equal to down. So say I'm checking for the down key. If the down key is down and the previous key state is not, um, the down key is up. So if I'm not pressing the down key, therefore this statement returns true, right? But if I'm holding the down key and I and we never or like say I'm holding the down key and we never call this function and we loop again. Then now this becomes down, or like say we execute this statement is true, right? And I'm still holding the down key. This will become down, and this will still be equal to down, and therefore the statement will only be um this statement will therefore be false. So therefore, uh, this only checks for single key presses, and we we can make a function to check for uh for multiple um key presses if we want. 
uh, like for continuous key presses and we will we will after but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an overload of this and we're gonna make uh, params keys and key so this is gonna check for multiple single key presses so for example if you have a, a enter key or something right uh like most times to go to an exit you might have two buttons to press for enter key you might have the enter button and the z key so either one is vice versa so that's um different ways you can do it and let's say you like for for moving up or down right uh in your game uh for directional buttons you might have the wasd keys and you might have the up down left right keys the arrow keys so you can um set them to multiple keys uh with this so we're gonna have a four each I'm gonna say uh, keys, uh, key and keys, and we're gonna say if, and we can just copy this, and we'll we'll take this, and we'll put return false down here, okay? So now we're gonna check for key released, okay? And we're just gonna copy all this right here. Uh, just for the sake of time so we're gonna change from key press to key released and it's just the exact opposite so we're gonna check if the key we were uh, holding down was released or if we're yeah if the key we were holding down if we finally let go of it right and there's some times when you'd use it like um maybe you want to wait out till they press the enter key and they let go of it for to you to do a combo or or when they're exiting a screen or whatever it's it's up to you really uh so um for the key release instead of checking for key down for the key state we check for key up and for the previous key state we check for key down and change that for this up and change the down and then if you want to check for multiple key presses then we can also do that so we'll, we'll just call this um, call this public bool key down and uh, we'll just take keys a key and we'll just say we should save key state that is key down the key then we return true else we return false and uh, we could do that um, we can do for multiple things for params so we can say public bool key down keys no params keys key and we have our for each keys key and keys and we'll say that if key state dot is key down keys uh, then we return true and after that we say return false okay so now we got all that stuff done so let's try and add an input manager to our splash screen and we're gonna have to do another tutorial because um there's some things that we have to do for the input manager so let's go to game screen dot h and since i mean game screen dot cs sorry and since most of our screens are going to take input then might as well make an input manager in game screen so we call it input manager and in the initialize in the load content we'll say equals to new input manager but for uh to be honest we're going to add an input manager in the parameters and you'll see why after uh but for the sake of this tutorial just to test it out to see how it works then we, we won't we won't do that uh, so what what now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say input manager dot update in there and we're gonna say that or input manager dot key pressed keys Z so if we run the oh sorry so we got in some errors got a chance to key and so let's run this so I press the Z key, it still works like it's supposed to. And just to show you I'm not lying, uh, let me just change this back to cornflower blue. Run this one more time. They press the Z key, it still fades out. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and bye.